Hello everyone, and a good act morning to you all. I am here to discuss the contents of the newly released official Shadowbringers Job and Dungeon Guide as of today, the 24th of September, with regards to the Summoner Job. Patch 5.1 can't come soon enough next month, with the changes we are all excited to find out about. However, fellow players and I have been eager to know the original vision Square Enix had for the current iteration. Two years ago they had released an official job guide for Stormblood, and now we have the one for Shadowbringers. Without further ado, let's delve into Shadowbringers Summoner as Square Enix intended. It's important to note that the official job guides only see a formal release in Japanese, where to get them outside of Japan, one must import them online or buy them from a store such as Kinokuniya, as can be found in various states in the US. Many thanks to Arseli from the Balance Discord for providing us with the upcoming pages from the guide. The first two pages introduce Summoner as a magical ranged DPS job with Eggies for Pets, while explaining what the actions do, like on the official Square Enix website, and including where to unlock the job in Limsa Lominsa once you hit level 30 on Arcanist. The actions themselves are in chronological order for when they are learned. Thus far, business as usual. What is immediately interesting to me is that all of the Ruin GCDs only state their current max potency, indicating that this was edited or completed after the removal of Fester Ruins in patch 5.08 nearly a month ago on the 29th of August. Let's look at the first one, Ruin or Ruin in Japanese. Taisho ni Muzokse Mahoko Geki Iryoku Hyaku Hachiju. Translated into English, it means an unexpected magic attack on a target with a potency of 180. Nothing unusual there. It then explains that at level 54 it upgrades to Ruin 3, or Ruinga. Everything following is pretty much as we know and expect with the current release changes. As such, it is important to remember that this guide will soon become slightly outdated pending 5.1's changes. Pages 3 and 4 expand upon the further nuances of the job's traits, dots, etherflow, and pets. At the bottom of page 3 it emphasises the importance of weaving abilities after Ruin Do while making the most of etherflow actions while on the move to continue DPSing. This makes a nice change from the lack of teaching weaving for the game, but is still something that should be explained better in the game itself. On page 4 it covers pets, their action cooldowns, and the relationship of eggy assaults with Ruin 4. It also emphasises the Eggies now having three distinct roles, Ifrit Eggy as the melee type, Titan Eggy as the support type, and Garuda Eggy as the range type. The bottom half is pet action tooltip descriptions, as can be found on the official website. Now onto the meat and potatoes of the summoner section with rotations. Page 5 covers Dreadworm Trance and Demi Bahamut. It begins by explaining Dreadworm Trance and the associated gauges before introducing how they envisage the execution of Dreadworm Trance, or Trance Bahamuto. The first odd recommendation without any frame of reference to timings is Tri Disaster having to be used before Dreadworm Trance because of the Tri Disaster reset. While this is correct, or else you would lose the use entirely, it gives the impression that at level 60 the sequence will always be Tri Disaster just before Dreadworm Trance, when that only happens for one out of two Dreadworm Trances. With the way the cooldowns are structured, one hard cast dot set is inevitable. However, if you always try to have Tri Disaster occur just before a trance, this will lead to an additional hard cast dot set, meaning another two Ruin 3 GCDs traded away at a loss, while also losing an entire use of Tri Disaster every two minutes. They do emphasize using the instant Ruin 3s from Dreadworm Trance to use abilities efficiently, so good going with the weaving. Another aspect of Ruin GCDs they cover is emphasizing that the intended GCD count at 60 is 6 Ruin 3s. Although delays can make the total be 5, while we have to prioritize ending with Death Lair. The second half pertains to Demi Bahamut. It begins with explaining the true Dreadworm Aether cycle in the Demi Bahamut, as well as there being about 45 seconds of Ruin GCD filler before every second Dreadworm trance. There is no mention of ending the second trance early, however, in order to catch Death Lair and Bahamut under raid synergy buffs. Now, the Bahamut sequence is somewhat questionable to me. It suggests an immediate summon Bahamut into Enkindle Bahamut after Ruin 2. Even back in Stormblood, this idea was going to cost a Wormwave. In Shadowbringers, that still remains the case. Their GCD sequence is Ruin 2, Summon Bahamut, Enkindle Bahamut, Ruin 3, Ruin 3, Ruin 3, Ruin 3, Ruin 2, Enkindle Bahamut, Ruin 3, Ruin 3, Ruin 3, with their expectation being 8 Wormwaves. 
Here's an example of me performing this sequence. Death Flare into Ruin 2, into Summon Bahamut, into Immediate and Kindle, followed by four Ruin 3s. As you can see, there's only a handful of Worm Waves happening there. Then another Ruin 2 into Enkindle for the fifth Worm Wave. Then the three Ruin 3s afterwards, only of which one makes a Worm Wave for six out of eight total. Granted, if I did this with lower ping, I could have potentially had 7. That is still one short of their intended amount of 8. For verified consistent 8 worm wave sequences, please check out the actmorning.com demi summon link in the description below. Page 6 covers Fiber Trance, an example AoE rotation leading into Demi Bahamut. It begins with covering the Firebird gauge, as well as the trait changes leading to the Demi Bahamut and Demi Phoenix 2 minute cycle. It seems, even at level 80, Square Enix are recommending a full Dreadworm Trance into Demi Bahamut, leaving 25 seconds until Firebird Trance after Bahamut ends. Tri Disaster is just before Firebird Trance, which is how we are currently doing it. This is despite 20 seconds of Ruination being wasted due to Firebird's Trance GCDs not being buffed by it. I do question the design of this anti-synergy, Square Enix. Their Firebird Trance sequence is mostly okay, However, with the innate delay Demi Summons have, the first Fountain of Fire is not going to result in a Scarlet Flame with normal timings. The Clip method would have to be done, or the Triple Weave method. As a result, the max number of Scarlet Flames given their rotation would be 7 out of 8, although they do not outline that 8 Scarlet Flames is the goal. The second half is the example AoE rotation at level 72. The sequencing in the chart by itself isn't sensible, however, when you read it as a priority of things to do before the actual rotation beginning with Dreadworm Trance, then it is more plausible. It mentions using Garuda Eggy for multiple targets, Tri Disaster or Hardcast Dots into Bane, Energy Siphon over Energy Drain, and Pain Flare over Fester. It doesn't mention at how many targets for these things, where Garuda is 2 plus targets, Energy Siphon and Pain Flare are 3 plus. Using Dreadworm Trance Outbursts to weave with is good, although while it talks about using Garuda Eggy Assault, there is no mention of the anti-synergy where upon summoning Bahamut, Garuda Eggy Slipstream will despawn and no longer do damage. It does mention that Akmon is very powerful against multiple targets, but it does not mention that it is worth cutting Trance shorter to rush into summoning him. Pages 7 and 8 cover the general rotations at various levels. It begins with an example opener at level 50. Honestly, level 50 is lacking so much of its older toolkit that there's not much really to say about the rotation in the context of their guide. It opens with dots into energy drain, although if buffs were to happen later, the festers should be held instead of being used immediately. About those festers. This rotation features an impossible fester pair, but the second fester is used less than 3 seconds after the first. Fester has a 5 second cooldown. This is illegal, you know. Otherwise, correct weaving is done with Ruin 2 and 2 abilities max, with Eggy Assaults also being used. Beyond that, it's a whole lot of Ruin casts with hardcast dot applications every 30 seconds. The next part is the rotation at level 60, which adopts further nuances thanks to Dreadworm Trance. The biggest changes are more weave space thanks to Trance's instant GCDs. Tri Disaster and the Tri Disaster Reset, allowing 6 more Hardcast Ruin 3s to be gained every 2 minutes instead of having to use those GCDs on dots. It mentions as well to end Dreadworm Trance with Death Flare at 2 seconds remaining. This is surprisingly cautious, but I do prefer their prioritizing Death Flare over it cancelling. Ah, <sighs> about those impossible festers. They appear again in between all of the weaving with Eggy Assaults. This is illegal, you know. Page 8 begins with the level 70 rotation example. Now we're building up to the point with Demi Summons, where we have Demi Bahamut every odd minute. It begins with mentioning that Eggy Assaults at level 62 now grant up to 4 stacks of further ruin for ruin 4 use. Previously they taught the Summon Bahamut rotation, but emphasized that the rotation as a whole doesn't change much besides that. There is no mention about Demi Summons not being able to use Eggy Assaults. Maintain your dots, fill with ruin, and use abilities to deal damage. Sounds about right, at least on the surface level. 
Although it's not present as an image in the rotation chart, there is a text mention of Aether Pact and Devotion, saying that it should be used prior to using your burst damage with Fester and Death Flare. It's good that it's mentioned, however, such an important idea as buff synergy should definitely be clearer and more apparent visually. Square Enix mentions that with Summon Bahamut having 20 seconds, that gives room for 8 spells at a 2.5 second cast for the goal of 8 worm waves. Technically, the window is more like 17 to 18 seconds due to the initial demi summon delay and the ghosting window at the end. They show again the same rotation as before, only there is now an energy drain paired with the second and Kindle Bahamut. This sequence really isn't great and will cost you more worm waves in the long run. Last but not least is the current level 80 rotation. It starts with the Dreadworm Aether trait, allowing Bahamut to be summoned immediately after one Dreadworm Trance, while describing the overall cycle with Firebird Trance and all the Ruin 3 filler you could ever want. The chart says to use the level 60 rotation into the level 70 Demi Bahamut rotation after the first trance. Interestingly, it emphasizes that after Bahamut ends, the dot should be reapplied with Miasma 3 and Bio 3, not Tri Disaster. This means that our proposed dot cycle is the intended one where the hardcast pair always follows after Demi Bahamut. There is a rotational error with a Ruin 3 preceding energy drain. This is a hard clip, and it's surprising this slipped through after all the prior emphasis on GCD weaving efficiency. There is no mention of Swiftcast. Once it is time for Firebird Trance, it mentions to execute the previously outlined Firebird Trance rotation, then afterwards more dot upkeep and Ruin 3 filler until it is timed for the next Dreadworm Trance. When Dreadworm Trance is off cooldown, it's time to repeat the level 60 Dreadworm Trance rotation. This is a bit conflicting to me, as again, there's no mention of the more optimal case of cutting Dreadworm Trance's shorter for raid buffs. Though perhaps for understanding the foundations, this is sufficient. As for the impossible festers, they're still there. Square Enix, please keep in mind the cooldowns you create. Well that was a very insightful and educational experience for me to better understand Square Enix's intent for the overall rotation, and I hope it was for you fellow summoners watching as well. The rotation has been simplified, and not all in the best ways, leaving less to choice. However, in the areas where we can make decisions, Square Enix has deviated with some strange and in some regards frankly suboptimal cases, especially when we consider Demi Bahamut. Advising methods that bleed worm waves and scarlet flames, while maintaining that 8 for a demi summon is the goal, is a bit strange. Some things outlined could definitely be clearer as well. As mentioned, this guide will not be up to date in less than a month's time, but perhaps they will make existing elements better and give us some much needed quality of life changes in 5.1. I know I'm looking forward to another good birthday patch of summoner changes. It's time to draw this video to a close. You can find all of these guide pages on the actmorning.com news post linked in the description, as well as the Shadowbringers info dump channel on the actmorning discord server. Feel free to like, subscribe, and share with anyone keen on finding out about the latest information for Summoner. Thanks for tuning in, and have a good act morning.